After a year exploring together, the Mars helicopter and rover have now set off on separate paths to the delta. Each must navigate over and around the treacherous terrain that stands in the way of the mission goal on this episode of Mars Guy. Perseverance wrapped up its sampling activity last week, bringing to eight the number of volcanic rocks that can be used to date events on the crater floor and interpret the pre-Delta history. This cleared the way for it to begin the long drive around the impassable terrain known as Sita. The exact location where it contacts the Delta is uncertain, but it could be about three miles or five kilometers before the best rocks for sampling are reached. Although three miles is trivial for a car on Earth, or even a human, Perseverance has to use its autonomous driving skills to safely navigate the distance. Fortunately, it's better equipped to do so than any previous rover, using a system that allows thinking while driving, which means faster cameras and an additional computer dedicated to image processing. Perseverance is now routinely making drives of 200 or more meters, a couple of football fields, and even stringing them together over multiple saws with no humans in the loop, as I described in episode 48. That thinking while driving, which everyone should do, was evident in the drive on saw 381. The reconstructed path is a squiggly line that shows Perseverance picking its way through the terrain for 250 meters. The next drive was a much straighter shot thanks to a smoother terrain with few rocks, allowing it to cover nearly 300 meters. And yes, the hitchhiking potato is still on board, which I presented in episode 47. The plan is to dip back into Sita, where the terrain is relatively benign. This will shorten the route to the delta and provide a last look at the oldest rocks in Jezero, or Jezero Crater. Here's the spectacular view from the latest drive and Mars Guy for Scale. It shows one of the outermost sand ripples marking the entrance into Sita and the full scope of the flat-topped hills of the delta. Meanwhile, Ingenuity completed the 21st flight of its scheduled five-flight technology demonstration mission. The chief pilot figured they'd be lucky to get three entries in the flight logbook. Now NASA has just funded it for an extended mission, at least through September. Ingenuity started Flight 21 just a few hundred meters from its original flight zone. Here's the first shot from its downward-looking nav cam after takeoff, with its shadow distorted by the fisheye lens. And here's a model of Ingenuity for comparison and to show that it's not just a tiny drone. This is the takeoff in near real time as it climbs about 10 meters or 33 feet, revealing the sand ripples and finishing with a slight rotation at the end. Then, just as it starts its horizontal flight, it lurches forward a little, revealing a bit of sky beyond its feet before settling into level flight. Here's what that looked like the last time the rover's MassCam Z camera shot video of Ingenuity. Flight 21 took Ingenuity nearly halfway into Sita, about 370 meters or 1,214 feet, crossing numerous rover-trapping sand ripples before landing on one with a sharp crest. Maybe landing directly on this ripple was Ingenuity's way of showing mastery over this terrain. 